whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you seek, whenever you come, we, we welcome, welcome you. you. Good morning, and welcome to Sunday morning worship for Holy Comforter Church on August 16th, the year 2020, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We're glad to have you with us, and we invite you to share, us, share with us now as we sing together, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be merciful and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith, that it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Will you pray with me? May God grant that only the truth will be spoken here and only the truth will be heard. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we find Jesus far away from home. If you have followed his itinerary over the last few weeks, 
You know that after hearing of the murder of John the Baptizer, he tried to get away from it all, but instead ended up feeding 5,000 people who wouldn't leave him alone. That done, he sent his disciples in a boat across Lake Gennesareth and followed them on foot. The other side of the lake, of course, is heathen country. And anyone with any understanding of Jewish history and identity has to wonder what a good Jewish boy, or in this case, 13 good Jewish men, are doing over there. Just before Jesus left, he had engaged in some controversies with Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes about eating habits, what defiles a person, and how to keep the spirit of the law rather than its letters. And as you might imagine, the debating group broke up without agreeing on anything. Still, skipping the country in favor of Tyre and Sidon is a pretty radical step to deal with problems at home. And I wouldn't be surprised in the least if that particular trekking party was a little tense about its surroundings. What in the world were they doing there? I imagine them thinking. And was this kind of expedition really what following Jesus was supposed to mean? Now, if you have traveled to foreign countries before the pandemic struck, you'll know that moving in other cultures can be pretty nerve-wracking. From questions as basic as, where's the bathroom and what do they call it here? To, do I really want to know if this is a fried grasshopper on my plate or do I just munch it down without knowing any better? Customs, gestures and words are foreign and require constant attention and interpretation. It is hard work finding your way through the habits of other cultures. And the question whether the natives really are friendly is never far from the surface. Here in Tyre and Sidon, that's pretty much the state of mind in which we find Jesus and his disciples. And amazingly, the Jesus that comes to the surface is neither the one we have come to know and love or, when we are honest, a Jesus we particularly like. Because when the unimaginable, the unspeakable happens and a woman approaches him, a Canaanite woman, arch enemy and human of the very inferior class of female. And she speaks to him, to him who is a rabbi. He does the unexpected. He turns away. Not that he doesn't have every reason to do so. Her behavior is unseemly, it is imprudent, it is plainly out of the question, it is against every law on the books. Woman, don't do this, is all we can think of. But no one can stop her. She knows she could be rejected, ridiculed and punished. She knows all this and nevertheless, she puts all that she is and all that she has to the test to save her daughter. Word had preceded Jesus. He has healed others. Why not her daughter? She's a person too. Kneeling in front of Jesus, she asks, she begs, she pleads, but Jesus just stands there and is silent. Why do you do this, Jesus? I want to ask. I thought you had come for all people, the light of the world, the great I am, the redeemer of humanity, the second Adam. And you stand there silent? Don't you see this woman? Don't you have anything to say to her? 
though it might be not that hard when you don't have a face to that person. This is not a pretty picture. The disciples who first try to block her are upset. The woman is disturbing them. After all, not too much earlier, he had sent them out with explicit instructions not to go to the Gentiles. His and their mission is to the lost sheep of Israel only, he had said, and they had taken him by his word. Does she even know what she's doing as a woman, as a foreigner? Get rid of her, they say, and essentially, it seems that he agrees. But she didn't give them a chance. She kneels in front of him and he cannot but see her, her head bowed at his knees, her hands stretched out to him. Look at me. We can just about hear her pleading. Look at me and think of your own mother who raised you. Lord, help me. Heal my daughter, she says. And yet, Jesus cannot go beyond himself. He's torn, and we can hear the anguish in his words, which are harsh, you might even say cruel. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, he says. Did he just compare her to a dog? Yes, he did. You and your daughter are not worthy of me, of my God and of my gifts, he is saying. These gifts are for Israel only. What we are witnessing in this story is the conversion of a savior, the conversion of a Jewish savior into becoming the savior of the world. A moment of truth for someone who so far has broken every rule on the books for inclusion of gender and races. And now that this conviction is tested in action, Jesus seems to fail the test. The Jesus whom we know as both human and divine seems to act entirely on his human tendencies. But her response to him is bold in all of her humility. No, she says, I don't want you to take anything away from those that are dear to you, from those you have come to believe you have been sent to. But whatever is left after you have served them, whatever is left will be enough for me and my daughter. Stunned by her words and her faith, Jesus finally turns to her and grants her request. The woman's plea is heard, the daughter is healed. Jesus is once again the compassionate teacher and healer we know him to be in the Gospels. But how much this conversion, this turning to her will cost him, we only see in its consequences. Jesus turned towards the Gentiles, his breaking the rules of conduct in talking with a heathen woman, his sudden expansion of his mission and ministry to all people and not just his own, each of them yet another nail hammering him to a cross. For years now, every time that I have had the privilege to preach or teach this Jesus story, I try to decide anew who the Canaanite woman is for us today and for the church. Which people do we turn away from? Who do we not want to see? 
because it's not just the asylum seeker and her two toddlers stuck on the other side of the border. It is also as we have had to learn the hard way lately, our black brothers and sisters in this country whose experiences we have managed to push out of our own well-ordered lives. And why stop there? I don't even want to see the person standing at more and more street corners holding up signs asking for money, for food and work. How far are we asked to go to see the stranger, help the stranger, acknowledge the stranger as a fellow traveler on the road of life and faith? Because I doubt it's just me who on bad days gets tired of seeing relentless need in front of me. Breaking law and convention for the sake of inclusiveness and generosity is something we all struggle with. And as far as I'm concerned, there is some hope in hearing that even to Jesus this act didn't come natural that he too struggled with folks in front of him who weren't supposed to be his followers, his petitioners, folks in front of him who asked for his time, his energy and ministry, even though according to convention, they shouldn't have. So next time we wonder as individuals or as the church, how far to extend our ministry. Let us remember that Jesus knew very well of the boundaries that existed around him. And he decided to cross them. Not because it was the popular thing to do, but because it was the decidedly unpopular thing to do. Unpopular enough that it could be called dangerous, unpopular enough that it killed him in the end. But each and every day, we should ask ourselves, as the body of Christ in the world, are we, are you and I, anywhere close to considering a similar risk? In the name of God, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. For the whole oh, people, people of God, God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that God will bring them to the knowledge, the knowledge of God's way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> For our families and friends, that God will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that God will have comfort and sustain them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that God will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family during this time of separation and transition. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of the unexpected, you let the Gentile woman subvert your plans. Keep us, give us the faith that comes from the heart and walks beyond our boundary posts that we might be surprised by outrageous grace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. On behalf of everyone at Holy Comforter, I want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. If this is your first time visiting Holy Comforter, we are especially glad you joined us, and we invite you to go to our website at www.holycomforterchurch.net to fill out a visitor card so we can reach out to welcome you more personally. While you're there, I hope you'll take a few minutes to look at all the ways we are remaining a community while we are apart, and I invite you to log in to something that interests you so we can get to know you better. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we look forward to seeing you soon.